Welcome back to another episode of The Banana Show, where we speak about a variety of topics. I'm your host, Anna Banana, and today is going to be a special episode because I have with me Dr. Eric Makrans. I hope I'm pronouncing his last name correctly. He is the author of The Reincarnationist Papers, which features Michael Evan, or Evan Michaels, the main character who comes back like he reincarnates, he comes back, but in different bodies. So he remembers his past life and the book follows his journey on finding people like him and their point of view. So I'm going to go ahead and get into it, get into the interview. And I hope you guys enjoy this interview. Remember to like, subscribe and share. And if you're listening from Google Podcasts, share with a friend, you know, share with family yeah so we're going to get into the interview stay tuned so I want to say thank you for taking the time out to come to this interview today I really really appreciate it and hope and I do look forward to working with you again with your other you know books and such so I'm going to go ahead and get into the question and the first question is what is your inspiration towards making of this book? All right, that's a great question. It's so nice to be with you, Anna. And it's so nice to uh, to talk to all the people that enjoy your podcast. And hello, Jamaica. Uh, <laughs> I'm so excited to uh, to be talking to all of you. So so the inspiration, it's, it actually comes from, from two different parts. So number one is, you know, you've probably heard people say the saying, oh my gosh, if I only knew then when I was younger, what I know now as an older person, right? I would have done X or Y, I would have made a different decision. So I took that idea and I took it to its extreme of Whoa. what would happen if I had the wisdom of two lives or three lives or 10 lives that were I would remember all of the experiences, all of the skills, the languages, the loves, the losses, everything. But then I remember it all as I'm reincarnated again in a 20-year-old body. So that was, that was one of the inspirations. The other one is, it's a little weird, so stick with me, Anna, <laughs> is that I actually have three small memories that don't belong to me. Whoa, that's yeah. crazy. Yeah, they're, they're really I, short. They're just like a few, like five or 10 seconds each, but they seem to happen in like the, the 1800s and the early 1900s. Oh. And I don't know what that means. I don't know what to do with it. Does it mean that reincarnation is real? I don't know, but I know <laughs> that they're there and they're as real as any other memory that I have. So then I took that to the extreme and I thought, what would it be like if I, if I had remembered everything from those lives? And then that putting those two ideas together, that was the inspiration for the book, Anna. That was really interesting, actually. I like the way in which, you know, the characters are developed from their past life and what they take, the lessons that they take moving forward once they start remembering. Right. Yes. So my second question is, what was the process like putting the book together? So the process for me is I, I write for, on a good day, I'll, I'll write for two or three hours. On a day where I'm struggling, it'll be you know, up to four hours, probably never really more than four hours. And I try to write a thousand words a day. And that's my goal. And then, you know, at the oh. end of, you know, 120 days, if you do it every day, and it's very hard to do it every day, uh, I end up taking, you know, every sixth or seventh day off. Uh, you've got a book, but then the book is in first draft and it's really raw and it needs a lot of attention. Like if you talk to other authors, like Salman Rushdie, for example, who uh, uh, you might have heard of, he says that writing is built. It was really about rewriting and rewriting and rewriting and getting it to where it's a commercial quality of a book, right? Like this one. I love it. I love the cover. So that's the process. It's you know, it's people talk about doing like big things, and it's like eating an elephant. How do you need? How do you eat an elephant? One bite at a time. Right. Over That's and true. over and over again. And then pretty soon you've got you've got a big book. 
So my question is, did it help with self-discipline with other parts of your life because you had to commit so much time to reach your goal of having a whole book? Yeah, I love this question because it's so true. If you get into the discipline, like, like anything, if you get up and you work out every day or you get up and you run every day or jog, it's going to affect other parts of your life. The same with, uh, with writing. Um, I think it was um, uh, Joyce Carol Oates who said that writing is concentrated thinking. So when you get into the discipline of concentrated thinking for three to four hours a day, it positively affects other parts of your life and how you work. At least it does for me. Okay, that's a good answer. Um, I'm a person I read every day and I feel like because I read every day, or even if I'm not reading, I listen to an audiobook. I feel like it has impact me paying attention to the parts of my life that need attention for me to reach my goals. So yeah, I do agree with you. So if you read every day, you are a writer's hero. You really? are my hero. <laughs> yes, because we would we would be nothing without readers, right? That's if you true. think about it, when you read a book, when you read my book. I wrote the book, but you're bringing it to life in your own head. Yeah, that's true. So in, a, in a way, you and I are collaborating together on what your experience is for the book. So without you, I'm, you know, I, I, it's like a movie with no sound, right? I only, you know, I only have half of that. So, you know, I love people that read. I love readers. Please keep reading. I'm a big reader as well. I don't read every day, but I try to. Yeah, that's so, okay too. And that's, that's, you're welcome. And it's actually one of my main hobbies. So, you know, I'm grateful that I'm appreciated. Okay. So the other question is in, in the book with the characters such as Evan or Puppy, um, when they speak to regular people about their past life, others would think they are crazy. Um, do you believe that life after death? Um, so this is a, this is a very good question. It's a complicated question. It is. Um, I usually get this question in the context of, do I believe in reincarnation or not? And I, 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 I like your question better actually, because I think <laughs> yours is a better question. Um, I don't believe in reincarnation, but I don't, I don't not believe in reincarnation. Like, like my experience, I have those three memories that don't belong to me. I can't sort them out or put them with an identity that lived before me, but I know they're there and I have to deal with them. But do I believe in life after death? Yes, I'm a Christian. Uh, I've, you know, I've, I've accepted Christ and I believe that there is going to be a continuation for me and my, and my life and my consciousness uh, because of my faith. Okay, that's a good answer. I mean, you're not, you're in the middle. You don't, you don't disagree. I'm open -minded. <laughs> no, okay. Yeah, basically. Um, question four is like, I like the way that you mentioned that after death, in a sense, they just change body. Instead of coming back as the same individual, they just change bodies. Was that intentional? Yes. So, so the way that it works, so it, just imagine, if you would, for a minute with me, Anna, that reincarnation was real, right? And that's part of what you have to do to suspend disbelief and enjoy the book is, mm -hmm. but so, so when you live a long life and you die, that your consciousness, your everything that makes up your mind and your experience would come back again, it would be reincarnated, but your body is gone. Mm -hmm. So you're going to need a new vessel, which would be like a new body, but the bodies are random. Like I don't yeah. always come back, you know, we wouldn't always come back as a Mac. So this gives, you know, so, so that was on purpose, uh, but it actually makes for much more interesting characters because you get to be a man, you get to be a woman, you get to be rich, you get to be poor, you get to be from, you know, uh, a, a noble, important family, and you get to be, you know, the son of a horseshoer or something like that, right? Yeah, it's like experiencing life from different perspectives. So, Well, I, I've, I've had a lot of different uh, perspectives in my life, 
um, you know, I've always just been me, a man, <laughs> but, but I've actually been, you know, I've, I've, been, I've had a lot of different jobs. I've lived in a lot of different places. And when you think back, as you get a little age, like me, you can see my white, my, you know, my <laughs> white beard, uh, you, you, you can begin to think of when you were, you know, a truck driver or a welder, or when you were a university student, that it almost seems like that was like a different life, like a different version of you. And I've always, I, I have this quote on my desk that says, every man is his own ancestor and every man his own heir. He devises his own future and he inherits his own past. And I read this almost every day and I read it almost every day when I was writing a book. And in a way, like I could write this book now, the one that we're talking about now, the Reincarnationist Papers, because I studied English and Russian literature in university. Wow. That was 30 years ago, right? So that was like a, you know, that was like a generation ago. So in a way, I have inherited the knowledge and the skill and the ability from what I did 30 years ago. Yeah. That's what that quote means, right? Being able to inherit um, uh, you know, inherit your own past and be, you know, and be a benefactor to your future self. That I didn't think of it like that. Can you send me that quote when you get offline? Absolutely, I, I will. Really I will. Want that quote. Yeah. yeah, that's true. And that is how, like, when you when you feel like when your your present self, you feel like if I knew what I knew back then, my decisions would have been different. That's but exactly. it's a growing process. You don't know what you will know in the future, and you just have to work with what you already know now for the that's present. Right. Yep. So yeah, that's that's a great way to think about it. Um. I like the way that the book conveys the same characters and that they enjoy coming back. Some, some of the characters refuse to adapt even though they know that they're coming back. Was that intentional? Yes, that there are some, in the same way that there are some people that you probably know in your life that adapt to change and others that do not adapt to change. In a way, they wanna still keep living the way that it was 10 years ago or 20 years ago or 30 or 40 years ago. But again, take that to its extreme. There are characters that prefer to live the way that they lived 200 years ago, right? Before automobiles, before airplanes. And so it's a, it's a metaphor for people being open to change and embracing the future or whether they feel more comfortable living in the past, which in a way is a bit sad. And those characters yes. that don't embrace the change are, are sort of tragic and sad characters. Isn't it a bit difficult to be like, you're living in the future, in a sense you're living in the future, but you're also living in the past. Isn't that sad for um, them? Uh, it, it's sad if they have those experiences that were difficult for them that they still carry with them. You know, uh, you know I'm, I'm, I'm the culmination of all of the experiences for 54 years of life. You're the accumulation of experiences up until now in your life. Yeah. And if there are bad things in there, right, those things can stay with you. But if there are good things in there, they'll stay with you too. Those, you inherit those from your former self. Yeah, that was a good answer. <laughs> um in the book this is question six in the book evan michaels the main character has this weird relationship with fire is that intentional to say that whatever major thing happened in one of their past life it's that they're going to hold on to it for the rest of their many lives that's exactly it anna and, and Evan is a bit of a unique case because just like me, right? If I went around telling people all the time that I had memories that didn't belong to me, even though there's just three of them, they're really short. You know, people look at you like you're weird, like you're crazy. Now this happens for him. Like he believes that he's the only one in the world that has the ability to remember all of his past lives until he meets Poppy. But until then, the only thing that remembers him in multiple lives is the fire. 
the fire recognizes him because the fire is exactly the same. Yeah. So that's why I use that in the book and his relationship with fire. That's actually very creative because, you know, the we change, fine, but fire never change, oxygen never change. That's right. Some things are constant. So that's very creative, actually. Um, any more books um, are set to come out or release? Yes. Any so this soon? is the first book in a series. Oh. There will the second book in the series is uh, almost done. 98, 99% done. And I'll be, uh, <laughs> I'm glad you're excited about that. Um, and it'll probably be coming out in 20, late 2021 or early 2022. And then there are at least two, uh, two other books in the series. Oh my God, I'm excited to see um, how Evan progresses. Right. And how the story, you know, ends because it's really interesting. I really enjoyed the fact that instead of bringing them back as the same person, you made them live different lives and remember the lives of the previous person that they live. I think that That's was right. very creative. Yeah. Um, where can they get your book? If people are so, interested in buying, where can they get yeah. the book? Uh, so they can buy it at, at uh, in the U.S., they can buy it at major bookstores. In Jamaica, they're probably going to have to buy it primarily on Amazon. Mm. Uh, or uh, I think that's the primary retailer that they would need to use in Jamaica to buy it. Because um, uh, I don't know if it's actually in bookstores in Jamaica yet. But uh, you can read it uh, with an e-reader anywhere. And you can get it as an audio book anywhere. The book will be out on May 4th. So mark your calendars, uh, pre-order it now. <laughs> I already uh, did pre-order mine. <laughs> oh my gosh. Thank you, Anna. I so appreciate that. Yeah. Um, and then, uh, and then I look forward to talking to you again when the second and the third book come out. Yes. I'm actually excited because the book, like it was a slow burn at first until, you know, it reached the part where he met Poppy. That's where the book kind of just blossomed. Yeah. Yeah. And I really enjoyed it. And the other thing to keep in mind is that the book has been made into a movie. So Ooh. the movie is called Infinite and it will be released sometime in 2021. And it is based on the reincarnationist papers and it stars Evan, My it stars uh, Mark Wahlberg as Evan and it stars Dylan O'Brien and she would tell Edgy for uh, as well. That's interesting. Will it be out in theaters or? Well, COVID just... permitting, COVID permitting, Anna. But yeah, there. The, the movie actually was supposed to come out last year, but it was delayed because of COVID. And um, you know, we, we'll see when it lands in 2021. It's supposed to be in um, three months, but you know, in the U.S., I don't know if we're quite ready for that yet. Because um, of COVID. Because of COVID, right? So, but, but you know, they, the movie's done, uh, and I'm super excited about it, and it's been a wonderful experience working with Paramount Pictures and all the people that are involved. Oh. So there's a movie version of it, so go see the movie when it comes out, but read the book first. I'd like to see the movie. Please read. I'd like yeah. to see the movie because I want, I like to make comparisons yeah. The books, the movies to see if they convey the book properly. Sometimes I really do enjoy reading the book more because there are things that are in the book that aren't in the movie. Maybe because they want to not make the movie that long. So yeah. 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 Well, <laughs> as writers, we get to do a lot more with the book because we get to spend a lot more time with you than just two hours. That's true. That's a that's a great way to look at it. Right. Well, this concludes the end of the interview, and I am grateful that you took the time out to, you know, do this interview with me. I look forward to other opportunities with you, and, you know, just thank you. All right. Well, listen, it's been a pleasure. Thank you so much for reading my book, Anna, and for, uh, for introducing me to other readers and other people in Jamaica and everybody else who listened to your podcast. Uh, I'm so excited to hear the playback and I'll be very excited to talk to you again when the second book is out. Yes, I'm actually excited too. Um, I will see you another time. I'm okay, all right, bye-bye. <laughs>
Bye.